Yeah, come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, I feel you in this place tonight, Lord. Listen, if you're watching online, I just want to encourage you to share tonight. Sharing is caring, so just get the word out. I believe that God will speak to you right in your house. There's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. I feel like a revival kind of anointing here tonight. There's like a, a release of the presence of God to... Um, to uh, take people into the next dimension of what God is calling them to. So if you're watching online, don't worry about you might be watching somewhere in Africa. You might be watching in India tonight. God wants to touch you right there in your house. And uh, God will go right through this camera and touch you there. Hallelujah. Man, I feel it's like um, I feel like the oil of God, like saturating... And um, over the last couple of weeks, um, I've been feeling an increase of the presence of God. Like uh, there are certain seasons that I feel Him come in, in like a really increasing way. And when that begins to happen, I know that I'm going to get stuck somewhere pretty soon uh, with extended meetings. And um, I was in Washington State last weekend in a place called Yakima, and uh, we almost extended because the presence of God was so strong. And uh, we had people that were, one man that was completely blind in his eye, blind from birth. God popped open his eye. He started being able to see. Presence of God just started flowing in, um, in every one of the meetings, every one of the sessions. In fact, on Sunday afternoon, the presence of God came so strong into the building that there wasn't room enough to pray for people in the sanctuary. So we had to move them out into the hallway and the power of God hit them in the hallway. They were just laid out everywhere in the foyer, all in the hallway. Even the kids, five, six, seven-year-old kids, were, uh, were, were, were wanting to get prayer. And you know when that begins to happen that there's something in the air. How many are feeling something in the air? And I don't know about you, but I've been feeling it really since January. There's been, there's been a, a, a sense, a stirring in my spirit that something is about to come forth. And then last week, um, I, I, I've been actually having, uh, through this last season, encounters with the Father. And I can't remember in the last 20 years of, of, of serving the Lord faithfully where I've had back-to-back -back either dreams or visitations where the Father comes. And in particular, last week, I had uh, three uh, encounters with the Father. And one of them was that the Spirit of the Lord came to me in the middle of the night in Moravian Falls. Has anybody ever heard of Moravian Falls before? It's a very, it's an amazing place. I'm glad that the Lord allowed me to move there. There's nothing there but mountains in Jesus. But it's an awesome place. You know, the Moravians went there. They had one of the longest uh, standing uh, uh, prayer movements, mission movements. And we believe that God has sent us there to kind of rebirth that fire. Because I believe God is raising up an army right now. How many believe God is raising up an army? And, uh, you know, God is saturating us on purpose. You know, he's shaking and baking us on purpose. The spirit of fire and power of the Holy Spirit is on purpose. It's not just so we lay on the floor and shake and bake, and that's great. I pray tonight that God will nail you to the floor and you can't move. But when you get back up, that's, a, that's that power to go forth and preach the gospel. And so, um, you know, we've been having amazing encounters. But last week, uh, I, I was seeking the Lord, and the smell of cinnamon came into my prayer room. And it kept coming, like, in waves. And, of course, cinnamon uh, represents uh, the Father in creation. And I believe God is creating something fresh. And, you know, obviously, cinnamon was the second ingredient of the anointing oil. And so the Lord is anointing us with something fresh in this season. How many believe that? Three people believe that. How many believe that? Okay. And then the next night I had, I had a dream where the father came to me with two massive bottles of oil, like oil perfume and handed them to me. And of course there's a double portion. You know, when you study out the word, you realize that that oil represents the gifts of the Spirit. And I believe the Lord is pouring out a double portion of the gifts. There's a double portion of favor. Say that and say, I want that favor, Lord. 
And sometimes I feel like we get, we get, uh, we get so systematic in our thinking and, car, uh, and compartmentalize the way that God wants to use us that we put like ministry here and then we put business here and then we put family here. But how many know that God wants to pour out his glory on all that we do? I love what Tabitha was saying because uh, 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 about uh, giving and sowing because I believe God wants to raise up entrepreneurs right now that will, that will begin to move into kingdom business to fund crusades where whole crusades can be paid off. And you know, last year the Lord started challenging me with that. He said, start believing that whole crusades will get paid off. Just in a couple of weeks, we're about to go to Malawi and uh, we're going to be doing a mass crusade there in the nation of, uh, in the city of Lalongwe. And uh, the Lord began to speak to me. He said, he said, son, uh, begin to believe that whole crusades will be paid off just by one, one person and, 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 and one entrepreneur that would just say, I want, I want to use my business not to heap the blessing upon myself. Because you truly know that you're wealthy not when you have a bunch of wealth in your bank account, but when you're able to give. That's when you know you're really blessed. When you're able to give, that's when you really know that, that God is blessing you. And so we saw, I've been believing, you know, we just, got our, we just got our Malawi crusade paid for. But then somebody called me last week. A business, a business person came to one of our meetings and, and, and they kind of were saying, you know, what about this crusade that you're doing in Benin? And I said, well, we're believing God for the finances. And uh, they, call, they contacted me just last week and said, we're going to pay for the whole thing. And I believe God wants to do this because I believe time is short. And I believe he's pouring out his spirit on an army. And uh, I believe that we're going to go forth and not just see it in the nations, but see it right here in America. How many believe for the open fields? How many believe for the outpouring of the spirit in America? And uh, I was telling Tabitha that we're, we're getting ready to do Awake America in Central Florida. And we're believing God for over a thousand uh, radical believers to join us in a place called Claremont, Florida. It's right outside of Orlando. And we're believing for an entire week to hit the streets, to see thousands saved on the streets. And then we're coupling it with an open air crusade for three solid days. And you say, well, how are you going to get, you know, because Christians will come to a Christian event. But how are you going to get sinners? Well, we're going to give cars away. And we're going to pay mortgages off. And we're going to, I'm serious. We're, we're, we're going to give things away to attract people to come to the meetings. Because we realize, I, I just, I just know that if you're going to go after a big fish, you got to have some good bait. And sometimes we think like we're, we're thinking too old school, like, and it, you know, I, I love Billy Graham, you know, just as I am, you know, that we think that they're going to come that way, but we're in a totally different generation. And so God is doing something brand new and it can't just be a one man show. That's why we think that we're probably going to see about 5,000 people born again, because it just isn't going to be the open air where we're preaching and seeing people getting delivered and saved and born again. But we're wanting to see people equipped, people raised up to take the streets, even those that have never even done it before, people that have never even witnessed not even one time. They're just too scared. We believe that God is going to release a spirit of boldness, and there's going to be, there's going to be an entire generation that's equipped that's going to go forth into the streets and the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. And if Antifa can burn down cities in America, then I believe that there's some burning ones, some wild ones that will go forth into the scariest places in America and see the power of God hit. Me and some of my buddies uh, recently, I mean, it was a few months ago, but we went to a place, it was a brand new nation. It had never been formed before. How many like going to new nations? 
I've been to like 40 of them. So I, I just go all over this place. And then I found out about this new nation. It was called Chop Chaz. It was right in Seattle, Washington, but it was a new nation. And I said, we got to go there. That's where we need to go. So I took about, you know, seven or eight of my buddies and we went into this autonomous zone. And, um, you know, we went in the middle of the night. I don't recommend that. We get there and uh, we fly in. It's, it's late at night. And they're like, we should probably go in the morning. I said, no, we're going tonight. Because light shines the brightest at night, right? Where darkness is, God loves to shine his light. So we went at night and we walk in there. There's like, you know, a group of us. And uh, immediately they were on us. And uh, they, were ready to, they were ready to throw down. Not in a good way. But the Spirit of God came so strong. Listen, the, the Spirit of God came so strong that my, one of my buddies started prophesying over one of the main guy. And um, the guy literally looked at his buddy and he goes, he goes, I can't believe how are they getting this stuff about my life. See, sometimes we're intimidated to go forth. We're intimidated by what people look like. We're intimidated by what we see around us with our natural eye. But see, God has given to us the spirit, and that spirit has boldness upon it. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God has given us power. Put your hand on your stomach and just say, I got power. And um, you got power. You got power to heal the sick, to cast out devils. You got power to raise the dead. You got power to move in the miraculous. And it doesn't matter what they look like. And actually, the more wild are the circumstances and the situations, I've found that's where God really wants to break in. When it's like the almost at the brink where this could get really bad really quick, that's when God wants to break in and show off and show off and show out. And uh, within three days of us being there, just going around and witnessing, and um, there was times where me and my buddy were witnessing somebody, and they thought that we were a part of um, a a group, uh, a a racist kind of group, uh, Proud Boys, I think that's what they're called. I I didn't even know what what that was. And they were like, "These these guys are a part of that group. And then the leader that we had prophesied over the first night said, dude, these guys are here. They're Christians. Leave them alone. And you couldn't imagine the kind of drugs people were on, the things that they were doing. But the power of God kept breaking out. And within three days, that entire thing was broke up. The police came in and swept everybody out. Come on. You can give God a hand for that. But see, God wants to use us. Say, that's me. And see, tonight I feel like that oil of saturation, that fresh anointing for mobilization is in this meeting tonight. Where God wants to break off intimidation. He wants to break off fear. And he wants to release his power. His presence upon you. So that everywhere that you go, you become a living witness. And you can go into the wildest places. The scariest places. Last year I was in Saudi Arabia. And went to went into uh, a holy city. And preached the gospel in the holy city. See, God wants us to get boldness on us. Look at this scripture and in, in, turn with me to Psalms 47 tonight. Psalms 147. Verse 18. He sends out his word and melts them. 
Whenever God's word goes out, whenever you've been with Jesus, whenever a man or a woman has been with Jesus, whenever you've been touched by God, whenever you've been marked by heaven, every word that you speak carries that mark. That moment that you spend with him is not wasted time. That moment where you spend with God seeking him and the fire and power of God comes in and begins to touch you. In that moment, God begins to brand you with this power. And out of that experience, out of that moment of intimacy with him, out of that time, that transformation begins. No man that's ever been used by God, man or woman that's ever been used, has went forth without the touch of God, without the presence of God, without the fire of God. And, you know, people will say, well, Brother Charlie, I got touched back in 1994 at the Toronto Blessing. Or I got touched in 1995 at the Brownsville Revival. Or I got touched in 1972 during, you know, the, the Jesus movement. But my question to you tonight is what about that fresh touch? What about that fresh fire? What about that presence of that oil that is brand new. Because the Bible speaks about that, that fresh oil, that holy anointing oil that can come on you. And see, God has to saturate you in that oil. And he'll saturate you in that oil. And then he'll come and he'll release his word. Every person that has ever been touched by God is given a word from him. Every man or woman that has ever been touched, truly touched by God, may not have a plethora of, of messages. They may only have been given one. And that message streams throughout everything that they say. Every message, every time they minister, for some reason, that first intimate touch with God where the burning fire came upon them, that streams through their ministry for their entire life. And everywhere that they go, that encounter is present every time they preach. And see, God will anoint that one, that, that person to go forth and carry that message. And when they carry that message, they are able to impart that into others. God wants to multiply the oil. Say multiply. See, God wants to multiply the oil. He wants to multiply that power upon an entire generation. He wants to multiply his presence on purpose because he doesn't want just one person to carry it. He wants an entire army to carry it so that every place on the planet that, that, that the presence of God is available, there will be a person that carries that same power and presence. And when they show up, the power of God shows up. Say amen. amen. See, God wants to melt us. He wants to mold us. He wants to put us in that fire. And, and in the Old Testament, when it says the word of the Lord came, you know, when especially when it talks about prophets, it says the word came unto me saying. Many times people think it's just words on a page or like, you know, maybe an audible voice came. And that can be true. But many times when the 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 prophets would say, the word of the Lord came to me saying. That was a theophany of Christ coming to them and speaking to them. God wants to give us a face-to-face -face encounter. Because when you've seen him face-to-face, -face, nothing else matters anymore. When you get touched by the fire, ooh, somebody's going to get hit tonight. When you get touched by the fire, it doesn't matter how many people are in the room. It doesn't matter who's on the left or the right of you. It doesn't matter what, what, what so and so says or, or, or sister wet eye has, has to say or, you know, uh, deacon, deacon deadhead. It doesn't matter. You're 
I imagine that there was probably a lot more people that were qualified than me. There was a, I know that there is. There, and there was more people when I was 18 years old and got set by the fire of God when the power and the presence of Jesus came to me and set me free. And, and I did get dedicated my life to Jesus. And I said, God, I'll do whatever you say for me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. God, I don't know a lot. I don't, I'm not the smartest one. I'm not the brightest one. But God, you can use me. God, I'm right here right now. And I didn't know a lot about it. I just knew when I prayed in tongues, shokoto rabata, the power of God would come. So I just said, God, I'm going to keep doing this because it's working. Something's happening to me. But I made a decision in my heart. I made a decision and I said, I'm, I may not be the brightest one. I may not be the smartest one. I may not be the most educated one. But I'm going to be the hungriest. I'm going to be the hungriest one. I'm going to be the hungriest. I'm going to be so hungry and so desperate for you, God. Nobody's going to out-hunger me. If I even feel just a tad of the oil, if there's even a, a, a drip of the ounce of the oil of God in the meeting, God, I'm going to take it. Yeah, what's up? Never had somebody just, and can I tell you something right in the middle of my preaching? But hey. Last night, this Oh, you had oil come? Yes, last night. What? Yeah, I was using it all day and it filled up. We're going to anoint everybody with this tonight. It'll multiply. Unless you don't want me to use it. You shouldn't have gave it to me if you didn't. Good to see you, buddy. Look at this. He sends out his word. Do you know God will send out his word? The Bible says that his eyes search to and fro throughout the entire earth in whom he can show himself strong in. See, I believe right now in this most chaotic time. I mean, it's chaotic. It is. That God is searching right now some people that he can show himself strong in. And he'll look for that one person that just says, God, over here right now. God, send me wherever you want me. To. And, and I'll tell you, when he shows up, you got to be ready. Because he might do something to you that you don't even necessarily agree with. Oh, yes, Lord, please use me in revival. See, I hear people talking about revival, and I go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You want revival? You want the fire of God? You want the presence? Are you ready for, for that? Oh, yes, brother, I'm ready. I remember I was in, I was in Australia, in, in Perth, Australia, just a few years ago. I was ministering down there. And there was probably, I mean, I mean, I'm being gracious. There was probably a hundred people in this meeting. And, uh, you know, there were great meetings, good meetings. Me and my son were down there and, uh, we were, we were doing a tour of, of all of hitting all the major cities of Australia. And, and, uh, Perth was just one of the stops. Thought, okay, this is a three night thing, going to be in and out. And, um, on the last meeting, the power of God came so strong, knocked me to the ground, and I got caught up in a vision. And in the vision, I saw these two angels, and they spoke to me, and they said, we're the angels that are assigned to the city. And we've been looking for someone that will partner with, with, with us in revival. See, many times Christians always focus on the demonic. They're like, they're looking for a devil under every bush. And they're like, what's the principality of this city and that city? And we better bind this devil. And, I, you know, what about the angels of the city? What about the glory of God? Where, where's the glory of God? No, brother, we got to bind this spirit and that spirit and this spirit and that spirit and then this, this principality. And, the, and every, it seems like every city that you go to, this is the hardest city. You know, this, this, this principality is stopping revival.
And in that encounter, those two angels said, well, will you partner with us in revival? And, uh, and, 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 and my answer was, was yes. It was like Isaiah 6. You know when Isaiah said, woe is me, I'm undone from a man of unclean lips. And the angel came off and touched his lips with the coal of fire and burned his lips. And he was never the same after that. I came back out of that encounter, but the problem was is I couldn't talk. I literally couldn't say anything. They handed me the mic and I couldn't talk. I tried to talk, but no words came out of my mouth. I would go to talk and all I could do was just, I could just, I couldn't get nothing out. And I just, I walked around in this meeting and, uh, and, 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 but the, t the presence was tangible because when you have a real experience, it'll be tangible. It'll be, tran it'll be tangible and transferable. Who? I couldn't talk, but every person I touched just fell out of their chair, just boom, just hit, and the whole place just got blasted, just like a, 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 like a bomb went off. After the meeting was over with, the host came up to me, and they said, well, well, well that was the last meeting. I said, I don't think so. I think we're going to do another meeting. He said, well, there's only 100 people. I said, I said, we're doing another meeting. Some, sometimes you got to change your schedule. Because you'll feel the oil. And when you start to, when, when, you, when you know the oil's there, then, then, that's, that, then you know you're starting to strike something. See, we give up too fast because we look in our natural eye at things. And we think, oh, well, we're going to wait till the 5,000 or the stadium's full before revival happens. Sometimes uh, it's like, you know, it's 120 in an upper room burning. Sometimes it's like, you know, it's like Azusa Street in, in a barn. Whew. Sometimes it's like Evan Roberts with, with just one person that says, God set me on fire. Sometimes it's like Wesley or Finney. Lord set me on fire so people come and watch me burn. And, and they keep going back to the fire until the fire hits them. They don't just, they don't just say, okay, God, I got a little, little of the oil. No, they go, I go back again. And then I go back again. And then I go back again. And Wesley was like, I felt my heart go strangely warm. And then he went back again. And he went back again. And he went again and again and again. So we did another meeting. And the presence of God came again. Blasted the place. They said, what do you think we should do? I said, I think we should have another meeting. Third meeting. Now they're starting to line up outside. The building can only fit like maybe, maybe 200. On the fourth meeting, there was a girl who had broke her spine in 10 different places, had tried to commit suicide jumping off of a building. The doctor said that she would never walk again. In that meeting, nobody laid hands on her, nobody touched her. The presence of God came so strong, she stood out of the wheelchair, started walking. Within a matter, within a matter of just a couple of days, that story went around. We went from 100 people to 700 people. We had to change locations four, five, six times. People were getting saved every night. One man walked in through the back doors, said, I don't believe in any of this beepity beep, beep, beep stuff. The usher sat him on the second row. Great ushers. <laughs> Power of God came in. Gave the altar call. He, he threw his, his he, he had a cane. He had been in an accident where he busted his head. And, and they, they said, you're never going to be right again. You're always going to have a shake. You're always going to need a cane. He threw his cane down, completely healed. Started walking back and forth and gave his life to Jesus.
God will send out his word. Sometimes it'll come in a way that we least expect. And when he comes that way, then we got to make a choice to suspend everything. Because your mind will tell you, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to go here, you got to go there, you got this, you got that. And in that moment, you got to say, what's the most precious thing? Is it doing this and that and this and this and getting this done? Or is it taking hold of that oil? Is it getting a hold of that olive and saying, God, I, 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 I'm squeezing it until every drop is gone? Until every ounce of it is out. Because see, God wants to saturate us. And there's a purpose for that saturation. There's a purpose for that saturation. Because when he brings his word, he's also going to bring his fire. And that fire will consume you, all of you. Every ounce of you. Whew. Where you start saying, God, I, 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 want, I want more of you. God, melt me. Oof. Lord, melt me. I want to be melted in your presence. I want to be consumed by your power. Man, it's getting thick in here right now. Because I believe tonight God is looking for somebody that's going to say, God, use me in my city. God, saturate me to the point to where your words are in my mouth. And when I speak, people feel that encounter coming upon them. Religion will tell us that we don't need an encounter. Jesus will say to us, have you seen me lately? Because he wants to send his word out to us. He wants to send his word out and melt our heart again. He wants to saturate our heart with that oil. And we get so saturated with the oil of the Lord that we even begin to smell it. We begin to smell the, that frankincense. We begin to smell that cinnamon. We begin to smell the fragrance of the Lord. We begin to smell it. Because we're... we're <laughs> because the spirit realm becomes so tangible that it takes over our natural senses. And tonight, Lord, we're saying, saturate us. And we're saying, God, soak us for America. Lord, we love the nations, but Lord, even in America, where in the past we thought, well, to go into missions, we had to go uh, into foreign lands. But this is an hour where, where, where God's saying, will you even go across the street? What about the encounter just for your neighbor? Are you willing to saturate in the presence of God, to soak in the Spirit of the Lord until you get so soaked and saturated with Him that you don't have a word maybe for somebody in a foreign country, but you have a word for your neighbor. You have a word for the person across the street. You have a, you have a word for that drug addict, uh, 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 neighbor's kid that, 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 that's all messed up that you see every week that you just know there's something wrong and there's something not right. And, and, and the Spirit of the Lord's been speaking to you that there might even commit suicide, but 
but you're too afraid to break out of your box and say, I'm going to go talk to them because you, you, that spirit of fear tries to hold you back. But I'm telling you, when you get saturated in the presence of God, then the spirit of God begins to melt your heart for the lost. You can't hold back. You can't stop from speaking. You can't shut your mouth. You say, God, fill my mouth with your words. Lord, saturate me with your fire. God, put your words in my mouth so I can release them to others. And see, the Bible says when we open up our mouth, he'll fill them with good things. And God wants to fill our mouth, not with a message of doom and gloom and destruction in this hour, but he wants to give us a voice. You say, Brother Charlie, you're talking to me. I'm just, you know, I'm just little old me. God wants to give me a voice. Yes, he wants to give us a voice. He wants to give us a message in this hour. He wants to release the fire and the power of God upon us. He wants to melt our hearts so that when we come in contact with someone, instantly their heart is melted. The Bible talks about prophets, how the burden of the Lord would come upon them. It's a Hebrew word, masa, which means that the heaviness of God's hand would come upon them. Elijah saw the hand of God on Mount Carmel. He got himself into a position of birthing. I believe that the Church of America is in the place in a position of birthing. The true church. Something's about to break forth. But sometimes the servant can't see it. Sometimes the servant has to go back and look seven times. But a prophetic person knows that it's already coming. And they get themselves in a position where they start to, they start to pray. And they, that burden of the Lord comes upon them because they know that they're pregnant with something. I'm telling you, when you get saturated with the, with the oil of the Lord, when you get saturated with the presence of God, when the Spirit of God comes on you, you are impregnated with something. And, so, and that thing is about to be birthed forth into the earth. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You'll tell demonic kings, you say, you better get ready because it's about to rain. Can I prophesy to you tonight that the Spirit of God is about to rain on America? The sound of abundance of rain is about to fall on this nation. There are those that have sat at the ta table with Jezebel and plotted the demise of this nation. But I tell you by the Spirit of God that the Lord is raising up a generation that is on the mountain of the Lord and they hear the sound of abundance of rain. And there's about to be a flood in the land. There's about to be an overtaking of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of the fear of the Lord is coming into the church again. Where the fire of God is about to be released on this nation. Where there won't be one place where people don't know about God. Not because of one man or one man's show, but because of an entire generation moving like the army of God that is spoken about in the prophet, by the prophet Joel. That there will be like those that were like grasshoppers, but had faces like lions that leaped over walls. I decree and declare over your life tonight that you will be one that leaps over fortified cities, demonic fortified cities in this nation. You will go in there by the power of God everywhere that your foot tra tramples on. You will take that place for Jesus. I'm telling you, scorpions, snakes, demonic forces will not stop, stop you. You'll tread upon serpents and scorpions. You'll take every place for the, for, for, for the Lord. Oh, I feel the fire of God in this place tonight. I feel the presence of God coming in this place because God's calling a generation. He's calling you. You might be the only one tonight. You might say, Brother Charlie, I'm the hungriest one in here. Lord, God, melt me. You might be watching online tonight. I'm telling you, there's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. You could be the hungriest one for your nation, for your country, for your city. 
God is raising up revivalists in this hour. And you have to get in the position of birthing. You have to get in the position of saying, God, melt me in your, with your fire. Lord, let your oil, whew, let your oil come upon me. This isn't a time to draw back and be intimidated. This isn't a time to draw back and be intimidated by man. This isn't a time to draw back and be intimidated by religion. You might not be the most qualified, but I'll tell you, if you spend time with Jesus, you'll be the most anointed, and God will raise you up, and he'll anoint you above those that are around you. The Bible says in Hebrews that he, was, that, that he will anoint you above the brethren, that there is something about the anointing that will come upon you, that will accelerate you and lift you up. Lift your hands tonight. The presence of God is all over this place. Lord, melt us. Melt us with your fire. Melt us with your glory. Whew. Lord, I'm, the, I'm so hungry for you. God, let that fire, let that melting power Come into this place. And see, you'll get so hungry that you won't care anymore what people think. You'll say, God, over here, let it hit me. Right here, right now, God, let that power come on me. Oh, Lord, melt me. Let your fire come. Lord, release it tonight in the name of Jesus across this meeting. Release it in this place tonight. In Dallas, God, let, 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 let there be dominion in Dallas. Let a fresh anointing fall in this place tonight. Lord, you're sending out your word tonight. And see, when he does that, he'll cause the wind to begin to blow. Psalms 47, 8, 18 says, he'll cause the wind to blow and the waters to flow. See, the Lord will start releasing that wind. Whew. He'll start releasing that wind upon you. And it's the same wind in Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Ghost comes, he comes and he'll blow you away. It isn't a different wind that he brings in 2021 than what he brought in Acts chapter 2. It's the same wind. It may be centuries later, but the Holy Ghost comes and he comes and, he, and, and that wind is the same. It's not a different wind. It's not a strange fire. It's a heavenly fire. It's a, it's a heavenly wind. And that wind will catch you up. And you'll lift your, you lift your, you'll lift your hands. You'll just open up your mouth and you'll, and, and that heavenly language will come on you. People said to me, Brother Charlie, what's the message of the hour? The message of the hour is being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, Brother Charlie, what about, what, what about the spirit of discernment? If you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you'll have discernment. The more, the more you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, the more discernment you will have. Well, Brother Charlie, what about casting out demons? If you're filled with the Spirit, demons will just automatically come out. Well, Brother Charlie, what about prophesying? If you're filled with the Spirit, you'll flow in the gifts of the Spirit. What about miracles, Brother? If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God will do what He wants to do. And it'll flow fresh on you. And it'll fill you. And you'll go forth with power. And, you'll, and, and, and the gifts will be there. The gifts will flow. Like a river. The wind will blow. And the gifts will flow like a river. And see, so you can't get distracted. You can't get distracted by the, what this one says and what that one says. 
and what this, what this guy, and, and, and you know, I love theology and I love theologians, but one that's not baptized in the Holy Ghost, I don't, I don't, I don't care too much for. <laughs> if you know me, you just know, you already know. Anybody that doesn't, hasn't been touched by the move of God cannot even properly interpret scripture. And so they'll stand, you know, the critics, they'll stand on, 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 on the edge of the river and they'll just bark at you. But if you're smart, you'll stay in the middle of the river. Because the dogs can bark, but they can't, they can't come and bite you. And see, that's where the fish are at. They're in the river. And see, you can't even get, you see, people say, Brother Charlie, I want to go to heaven. I want to have an experience where I go to heaven. Well, you got to get in the river first. Because the pearls are found in the deep. The pearly gates, you can't even go through the pearly gates until you go deeper in the river. That's why it says, the Bible says, the deep calling out to the deep. And see, we, we, don't want, we, we get so shallow in our Christianity because we're afraid of what others think. But I'm telling you when, you, when, when you get saturated in the oil and you get, and you get doused with the fire, and you get, you, I mean, you get doused in the fire, it's unmistakable. You can't hide it. When you've been touched by the power of God, it's unmistakable. You, you, I mean, when the fire of God comes on, I mean, they will see it on you. It is in like, well, brother, I got a little fire. This little light of mine. No, you'll know it. You'll see it. You'll see the fire. You'll know it's there. You don't have to, you don't have to try to tell somebody. You don't have to explain it to them. You don't have to try to explain the fire. You need to see the fire. You ever seen, I mean, just somebody, just, I mean, imagine it. Think about it. Think about it for a minute. Somebody just dump this, you know, just gas on and just, and they like, and they're on fire. They're not standing there. They're not like, I'm on fire. No, they're running. They're running. I'm on fire. They're screaming, I'm on fire. The American church like this. I'm on fire. Oh. And depending upon what, you know, where, where, what, what kind of church you go to, they'll describe the fire to you. If you're a charismatic, they'll be like, ho, 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 I got the fire, ho. You know, I'm right. You go to the Word of Faith camp. You go over to the assemblies, it's like. <laughs> but when the fire's on you, touch your neighbor, just touch your neighbor and say, get this tonight. <sighs> no, no, I'm serious. Put your hand on your neighbor and say, get this tonight. If you got something to give, they'll get it.
See, you'll get so saturated. You'll get so intoxicated. You get so full of him. that you'll be transformed. Father, tonight I thank you for sending out your word. I thank you for the wind and, and, and the rain. I thank you for the, for, for the floods and the river being, being poured out in this place tonight. And see, it'll come in waves. And you'll get sensitive to know when the, and it's like you're waiting on the wave. And then the wave will come and it crashes in. What's coming on this nation is a heavenly storm. For some, it's going to be terror. For others, it's going to be glorious. What's coming on this nation will not be contained in the four walls. It'll spill out into the streets. It'll go into the highways and the byways. It will, it will go in, 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 into, in, into the strip clubs and, and the massage parlors. And it'll go in, 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 into, the, into the malls. And it'll go, it will go into the high schools. It will go, it will go into the hospitals. It will go, in, it will go, it will go into every place. It'll go into your home. It'll capture you in the night where you can't sleep. It'll wake you in the middle of the night like it did Evan Roberts. And, and it'll be like, wakey, 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 wakey. And you'll be, and then God will wake you up at three in the morning and you'll get caught up in the realm of the spirit until 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and the power of God will just surge through your town. I'm telling you right now, I'm, I am telling you that God saved the best for last. He puts you on the planet for right now. Not so that you can sit back and just wait until Jesus comes and I'm waiting until the rapture happens. No, you're aggressively uh, going after winning souls and aggressively going after the spirit of revival and going after the supernatural with everything that is in your heart, with everything, every fiber of your being, every moment of the day, you are saturated in the presence of God and you're thinking about, God, I just want to, I just want to touch you. I just want to see you. Lord God, melt me, touch me, fill me. Lord, thank you for pouring that oil tonight. Every drop is precious in this place. Every drop that God's pouring out tonight is precious. Every drop of the presence of God that's in this place tonight is being poured out on purpose. There are drops of that oil that are specifically sent for you. But I'm telling you, if you don't take it, somebody's going to grab it tonight. 
And I, re I remember, you know, I still do this, even at our gatherings in Moravian Falls, after it's all over with, I go back into the meeting hall and I just lay on the floor on the carpet and I say, God, every drop of oil that was left by somebody that was not hungry enough to grab it, Lord, give it to me. Because, Lord, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. There's got to be more in the presence of the Lord. Lord, there's got to be another assignment for me. See, sometimes people think that they, they've been used once or twice by God, and then they say, okay, that's good enough for me. But every time God completes an assignment through your life, there's always something fresh, another blueprint, another scroll that's coming down from heaven, another assignment that he's asking you to take, and it's your choice. I believe that God chooses people to be used by him, but I also believe, likewise, that people choose to be used by God. And they say, God, that might have been for this one or that one, but Lord, I take it. And this one might have fallen over here. And this one might have fallen there. And their mantle might have been left on the ground. And they might have been backslidden and left the Lord. They could have been used mightily by God. But suddenly they're just gone. And their mantle's left. And God says, who's going to pick up their mantle and carry on? Who's going to run with that fire and continue to go on? And while the religion screams and says, you know, just, just hold on a minute. Just settle down a little bit. Just move back a little bit from encounters in the supernatural and the glory. The mantle lays there until somebody says, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to burn. I'm going to pick up the oily mantle and I'm going to run. I'm going to get a hold of it, God. I don't care what this one happened with this one or that one or this one or whatever, God. I don't care what happened in that revival or this revival or how it finished or how it ended. God, I pick up the mantle and I run. Lord, I pick up the fire and I run with that oil and the fire and the glory. God, I want it. The whirlwind. Lord, if you, and when you see it, when they go, you can have it. And you say, Lord, I see it. I see the spirit. Lord, I catch a hold of it. I run after it. But see, as long as we're in the flesh, we can't see what the spirit's doing. We can't hear the spirit speak. We can't see the spirit move. But the moment that we get out of our sin, out of our natural senses and we say, God, saturate me, fill me, then suddenly we see the move of the spirit and it begins to flow and it begins to, and it begins to grow and it begins to go and it begins to move even through the meeting and it begins to touch this one and it begins to touch that one and we see it and we go, my God, look at that fresh touch. Look at that fire. Look at that mantle that got picked up. And you'll, and, 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 and you'll look strange to some, but I'm telling you, shake nations. You'll shake nations. You'll turn your family around with this fire. You start, you start dreaming bigger. You say, a billion souls, that a billion souls. How can I get a billion souls? Lord, how can I step in the prophecies of those that have prophesied? Whew. Fire in this place tonight. Fire's dropping in this place right now. There's fire in this place. There's scrolls, there's mantles being dropped down into people's spirits. Some of you ha had that scroll has been literally suspended in the air. And you're like, I don't know if I can take it. Because I don't know if I'm, chose by, I'm chosen by God to do this. Because it seems too crazy. It seems too wild. And God's saying, why don't you just reach out and grab it? Reach out and touch the flame. 
That's what Evan Roberts did. He saw the fire, the flickering flame, and he said, I reached out to touch it. When I reached out to touch it, it's, it consumed me. Lord, let that consuming fire come into this place right now. Let that consuming fire just permeate all of us in this place. I feel there, there's a, there is a special anointing that's here tonight. Whew. God's just saturating, setting that oil down upon us. Whew. Glory. Lord, let it, let it flow. Whew. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Whew. Let it, f- ooh. Let it flow. Whew. Lord, let it flow. Who? Jesus. Whew. Every single one that's hungry tonight, let it flow. Every single one that's hungry. Lord, let it flow. Fire God in this place. Karabo shatare kitiana. watching online, just take it in your house. Fire God right now. Fire God right now. Fire. Holy fire. Whew. Holy fire. Come here. Fire of God on you right now. Let the power of God just touch you fresh. Just lift up your hands. Whew. Fire of God on you right now. Fresh. Fresh. In Jesus' name, right now, let the fire of God, that the fi- there's fire in this place right now. Whew. Lord, let that man fall. Let that man fall. That girl right there in the gray, grab her right now. Don't knock her out of it. Yeah, just grab her and bring her here. Just pick her up and grab her and bring her here. Come here. Lift up your hands. Fire of God on you right now. The fire of God come on you. Let the Lord anoint you. I see the Lord anointing you for arts and entertainment. Lord, release that fire right now on her. Lift up your hands tonight. That anointing just touch you right now. Let that anointing just touch you right now. Whew. Holy. 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 Jesus. Grab this lady right here. Let the fire of God just come on. Yep. Just come here. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Just lift up both your hands. The fire of the Lord just touch you fresh. Let that anointing just touch you tonight. Fresh anointing on you.
Thank you. Are you together? You two are together. You, you, you do ministry. Yeah, come here. I want to pray for you both. Just grab hands. Fire of God right now on you. I see, I see young people. I see youth. I see fire on young people. I see the fire of God. Just... <laughs> Not just in America. I see South America. I see young kids in South America. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Glory. 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 Shakata soparekete analabatuna. Just step over there. Just let God touch you tonight. There's fire in this place right now. Jesus. 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 Let fire just touch you tonight. Jesus. Let the fire of God just touch you. Fresh right now. Jesus. This guy on the end right here, you, you, you just grab, grab him right there. The fire of God's all over him. Just that, yeah, that guy, just lift up both your hands. Just lift your hands. Just step out in the aisle. Just step on the aisle. Just close your eyes. God, fresh right now. Fresh fire right now. Anoint his hands for war. Anoint your hands for war. Come on, lift up your hands right now. Ask him right where you're at. Say, God, over here, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, there is fire in this place. There is fire in this place. There is fire in this place. Whew. There is fire in this place. There is fire in this place. There is fire in this place. This guy right here in the blue shirt right here. Yeah, come here. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands, sir. I see the wind of God touching your lungs, touching your breathing, touching your lungs and touching your breathing. Thank you, Father. Let the fire of God. Thank you. Gasping for your breath. So like the enemy tried to even kill you. Take your life. In fact, when I saw you back there, I saw like a, 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 like a skull implanted over the top of your face and you were unable to breathe. But tonight God's breaking that off. I break that power of witchcraft, that assignment of the enemy against your life. Where you can't, it seems like even in the middle of the night, you, you, you like lose your breath. You wake up in the middle of the night like gasping for breath. Sometimes you even have like, uh, you have like these nightmares, like flashbacks from the past. Isn't that right? And also what happens is it's like, it's like just, it's like sweat, just, just like overwhelming, drenching sweat. 
and you can't breathe. It's like you can't catch your, catch your breath, heart palpitations. You understand what I'm saying to you? God's touching you right now. <sighs> Let that fire go right through you. Jesus. Yeah, breathe in. Yeah, breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. There's also a woman in here. Uh, you you have like a a, a growth like um, on your on your breast area, and you've been worried about it. You have it's like uh, it's 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 not. Uh, you've been worried like it's cancerous. God wants to melt that right now. If that's you, I want you to get out of your seat and come to the front. Don't care about what anybody thinks about you. Last week I was I was in. Um, I was in the Northwest, and and I, I gave a word of knowledge about somebody's kitchen being burned on fire, <laughs> lit up. I called that thing three or four times. The woman sat in the audience, palpitating at her heart. She didn't want to come to the front. Don't wait. Come here right now. Who cares what people think? We care too much. I'm telling you, if God's calling it out, he wants to heal it. What he's revealing, he's healing. Just lift up both your hands. That thing, that, just lift up both your hands, close your eyes. The fire of God right now. The fire of God on you. The fire of God on you. The fire of God, burn that thing out in the name of Jesus. You're a trailblazer. You're a city shaker. You're anointed. You're anointed. You're anointed with his words. God put his words in your mouth from a child. In fact, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1.10, God spoke to you. He called you like a prophet to the nations. The Lord's going to open up doors for you, but you've been, you've been afraid, especially because of this thing. And also things uh, concerning your, your family, bloodline, things that are there. God says today, I'm breaking that off. I'm separating those things. You don't have anything to fear. Nothing to fear. The fire of God's coming on you. The power of the Lord is on you. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed you to preach, to proclaim. Lord, thank you for touching her right now. Thank you for the healing power flowing through her. Thank you for that thing. Melt it now in Jesus' name. Fire of God right now. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we need worship music to break us into the spirit of worship. I'm telling you right now, if you lift up your hands and you just start worshiping Him in this meeting, you'll feel something you never felt on a keyboard. Because the, key, the keyboard can't make a sound that you can make. God, God put a sound on the inside of you that's unique to you. A keys can't make this sound. Keys and drums and, and guitars, they can't make the sound. That it, this, is an, this is an original sound coming out of you. And see, and, and, and we're afraid to open up our mouths, but, that, but, but when we open up our mouths, we're, we're going to get filled with that freshness of His power and His presence. Tonight's your night. Tonight is your night. To, whoo, ha, ha, ha. Tonight's your night. Tonight's your night. Oh, you don't need you don't need instrument. You need, you need God put it on the inside of you. He put a spirit song on the inside of you. The Bible says, "Be drunk not with wine, but be filled with the Spirit of God." Speaking to one another with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. You can open up your mouth. Just rupashte ke telamasata, rate ke stikiriando. 
Oh, I love you, Lord. Ribe besto po ribe sti anara magondere vetista roto shoto manea. Lord, you put a new sound on the inside of me. Oh, you, God, I give you glory tonight. Lord, I worship you. God, I give you praise tonight. Lord, I lift you up on high, Lord. Out of my belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Lord, saturate me, soak me, fill me, flood me with your presence. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just open up your mouth. Just worship him right now. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Lord, you're coming down in this place. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Oh, Lord, we magnify. King of glory, have your glory. King of glory, have your glory. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Oh, oh, we worship you. Parama sereriando roromatia. Yinararanamambambandu. Oh, we worship you. Zinananamandu rariando rananda nananda nana. <laughs> oh, we worship you, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Who katate, katate, katate de de asota tatana, rata boshete de de asola. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, we worship you, Jesus. Whew. 